Hey up everybody and welcome back. Well it's a little bit of uh, deja vu with this nickel plating video because I'm actually doing it for the second time. I started doing it because you know I was, as I say I was waiting for sandblasting and stuff so I thought I'd do this and uh, when I did it the nickel plating came out awful absolutely terrible and when I checked everything I hadn't used the kit for a long time so I just decided that um, the electrolyte the nickel salt was just contaminated and old so I had to order some new stuff and wait for that and then while all that was going on we had two feet of snow last weekend and then it dropped down to minus 11 degrees F which is what 20 minus 20 something centigrade was so cold in fact that even though I had additive in it the diesel fuel in my tractor gelled up and I couldn't even use that to clear the drive actually it was worse than that it started up was running fine you have to let it run for a while because it's one of these hydrostatic ones uh, so I ran it for a while backed it out of its building into this two foot of snow and that's when it died and it wouldn't start again so I ended up with a little electric heater because it doesn't have a block heater uh, I had to put a little electric heater underneath it a blanket over it all sorts of stuff anyway I got it going in the end and cleared the snow and then my computer crapped out on me and it's been really nothing major but one thing after another extremely annoying so here we go again now the one good thing is of course that because I had to order new chemicals and stuff I've just cleaned everything up and uh, we'll do this as if you're buying one of these kits I'm assuming that everybody's kits are about the same let's say this one comes from uh, Caswell and I believe there's a Caswell Europe so you should be able to get them there so let me show you uh, what the kit is then we'll talk about the process then we'll do a little bit of plating now some of this stuff this is everything you'll need some of it you get in the kit some of it you have to buy separately and uh, as we go through it all you'll see that um, you can get around some of it okay the kits generally contain a bag of nickel salt doesn't actually say what they are on these but I think it's uh, it's nickel sulfate I think you also get a thing called nickel brightener and I'm not exactly sure what is in this um, you know a lot of this stuff they for commercial reasons they don't put what's in it because they don't want other people to copy them but anyway you get that you get this you get a nickel plate well you actually get two you generally get some of this sort of muslin stuff which is used to wrap the nickel plate and it, it keeps things off the nickel and sometimes you get a bucket now if you get a bucket with it like the Caswell kits come with a round bucket and um, a little later on I'll explain why I like to use a square bucket so that's the absolute basics that you would get in a kit I think you can get sort of a slightly more expensive kit where some of these other things will come in with it but if you just wanted to start basically that's what you would get then you also need a heater one that has a thermostat in it and that you can set it because as with all chemical reactions the optimum rate is at a specific temperature you also need something to agitate the solution in here this one came actually with the original kit but I noticed that the later kits didn't supply one of these uh, and basically it's just an aquarium aerator again I'll explain why you need that you need water but you need distilled water the amount depending on how much crystal you've got and how much solution you want to make up it's an electroplating process so obviously you need the electro part so you need a power source I've got one of these but again as we go through I'll explain how you can manage without uh, one of these variable amperage things so that's basically it as long as you've got all that stuff you can nickel plate so what we'll do now is we'll part a bit of paper and I'll explain the nickel plating process then we'll go through the various items in detail now the whole purpose of nickel plating is to get nickel onto in this case I've put it as a steel just like a bracket so we need somewhere to get that nickel from there 
to there. So what you have is you have a nickel plate. That's the one I showed you there. I'll show you something else about that in a second as well. And this is going to be our anode. We're going to connect it to that and that's going to be our positive. This we're going to connect up to our other, the other end of our electrical source and that is going to be the negative, the cathode, anode and cathode. So you want to get the nickel from here to here. So what we do is we stick the whole thing in a bath of a nickel salt. There's our wires going out. And we pass a current through it. Positive to negative. Now what happens is this solution here, as I say, is a nickel salt, and I believe it's nickel sulfate, which is pardon me if my writing is bad. Nickel sulfate. I think that's the right formula. God, it's a long time since I did any of this. Anyway, what happens is that when you pass the current through it, the nickel sulfate dissociates and it becomes nickel ions and sulfate ions. Well, the nickel ions are positive, so they go and they clag themselves onto this. And the sulfate goes over here and clags itself onto the nickel and becomes nickel sulfate again. And the process just keeps going. Once it becomes nickel sulfate again, the current breaks it up some more nickel comes over here and sticks on there. Some more sulfate comes and attaches itself to the nickel there to put it back into solution. Now that makes this nickel anode what's known as a... Oh, the word's gone. I'm getting old. What's the word? Come on, people. It's a sacrificial anode. And I'll show you what happens. This is the one I've been using for some time. See that? It's just slowly disappearing. So this, if you like, is a consumable. Basically the solution stays more or less the same because you're constantly going from the nickel sulfate to just the nickel and then back again. So that's the process. That's all we've got to do. We've got to get ourselves a nickel plate. We've got to get ourselves whatever it is we want to plate. And we've got to stick it in this solution. Now, as I mentioned, you want this solution at a specific temperature. So we're going to put a heater in. Uh, we're going to have the agitator in there, etc. But basically, that's all that's happened. We're transferring nickel from there to there. So now let's look at the bits we need in more detail. Now, the first thing you're going to need is a container to do everything in. Now, just get a plastic bucket. As I say, often with the kits, you get a round one. But the problem there is, if you imagine the... Uh, the curve of that to be sort of the roundness when you put the plate in you've got to have it out there so with two plates in you only have this little gap in the middle to put the items you're going to plate but if you use a square one you put that in there put the other plate down and you've got a lot more uh, volume in between the two plates so you get yourself your bucket now as I say you need to have this running at a specific temperature so the next thing you're going to need is a heater of some kind. Uh, it's got to be adjustable, it's got to have a thermostat in it because you want to maintain it at a set temperature. So you put that in. Now, the next thing you're going to need is, as I say, the agitator. Now the reason for the agitator is twofold. One is that When you do the, uh, the actual electroplating, don't forget there's, as well as the nickel sulfate, there's water there, and the water's gonna dissociate to a certain extent as well, and you're gonna get hydrogen. And the hydrogen will go to the thing you're gonna plate, and it'll form little bubbles on it. And obviously where there's a little bubble, you're not gonna get any plating, so you'll end up with pitting. So you need to keep it agitating, the solution agitating round the thing you're plating, so that, the bubbles don't build up. The other thing is that we're working basically at an atomic level here. So the thing you're plating, as it depletes the solution around it, you need to have fresh solution there all the time so that it's constantly doing this transfer to the cathode, the thing you're plating. So that's what this little thing is for. As I say, it's just, uh, it's just an aerator, so just, get something from an aquarium place. 
Then you need your nickel plates. And these we stick in there like such. Cut a little piece, a little strip, because you're going to need somewhere to connect to your power source. So that's what that's for. Put one of those in each side. Now as I mentioned, you get this muslin which you wrap around it and then you put a couple of elastic bands on you see all this when I'm we sort of set up that will go in the other side then you make up your solution again distilled water so it tells you on the packet how much to make it also tells you to make it up take it to a certain temperature and sort of leave it overnight that's to make sure it's completely in solution before you do any plating then of course you need some way to get the current to go from one end to the other so this is going to be the positive of a power source and then the easiest thing to do is just get yourself a piece of old copper pipe keep it clean hang that on there and then you're going to connect your negative to this hang the piece you're going to nickel plate on that and stick it on there like that now you can see with this hook that it's got nickel on it what this is the easy it's copper uh, it's a piece of copper wire and what I do is get that sort of really heavy gauge just scrounge a piece from an electrician the sort of heavy gauge copper wire which is solid and not strand and then strip the insulation off and you're left with this which is what got it's about an eighth of an inch thick and it works really nicely for that Right now the next thing you're going to need, and very importantly, is your power supply. Let me see if you're still in frame. See I'm getting very technical, in frame. So this is going to give you a positive and a negative. So the negative will go to here. I can't have moved you, so I, yeah, everything's still in, right. It's going to go to that, and the positive is going to go to your nickel plate. So what you also need is a little piece to connect the two plates. Now what I've done is when I cut this strip, I cut it the right width for a spade connector. So now I can just pop the spade connector on there and these two are connected. And that's our circuit, positive, negative, round like that. Now the actual plating is a consequence of amperage, not voltage. And with nickel plating, one amp will plate 16 square inches of metal whatever you want it to plate so you've got to work out the surface area and again we'll come to that a little later but you can look at this two ways and this is where you can get away without using something like this here and it's the way I used to do it originally if one amp will do 16 square inches then 16 square inches needs one amp. Now here, I get my pieces, I measure the various bits, and if all the bits come to say 32 square inches, I set this to two amps, and we're fine. What I used to do was, as I say, I would work it in reverse, and I had um, a little transformer from a computer. So it was converting AC to DC, but also it was setting out a fixed amperage. Now let's say it was half an amp. Now half an amp will only do eight square inches. So what I used to do was I'd get all my little bits and I'd measure the surface area of them. And I'd say, okay, these three bits give me eight square inches. I'll do them. So you can do it either way. You can either plate the amount of square inches that suits your power source or if you've got a variable power source and they're not actually that expensive which is I mean obviously if I bought one they can't be very expensive so that's why I bought one of these uh, so that's the basic setup now what I'm going to do now is make up some new solutions and as it says you put it in I'm going to make up three gallons and leave it overnight with the heater on and we'll come back to it in the morning and then we'll look at how to uh, prepare the piece you're going to plate and the things that are important with that. Right, we're back. Now I've got to be honest here, I did a little test piece and I still wasn't happy with it. So I thought, okay, maybe it really is this uh, 
as you may have noticed the nickel plates are about clapped out they should keep going basically till there's no nickel but I thought we've got new solution and everything so I bought some new nickel plates as you can see I've uh, cut my little bit up quarter of an inch so that I can uh, cross connect them so what we'll do now is we will wrap this now as I mentioned this uh, this is here for a specific function now just as we get some hydrogen when we pass the uh, the current through this naturally if we've broken the water up we get some oxygen and you get some nickel oxides forming on the nickel and the purpose of this bandage as they call it in the kit is to keep that nickel oxide out of the solution so as I say you wrap it on like a little pouch you put a couple of elastic bands on and that's done right. I'll tidy that up a little bit and uh, do the other one now the next thing we've got to prepare is the actual thing we're going to plate so what I've got is this here now I could drill a hole in it to hang it on and what I've done here is I made it a reasonably regular shape so we can measure it and uh, work out the surface area which I'm going to show off a little bit of an ego trip in a moment now you will notice here that the bottom is very shiny the top's not quite so shiny and this side is dull now nickel we're only going to put a thou or so on so it's even more sensitive than paint to the preparation anything underneath the nickel is going to show through if you want a highly polished nickel finish you've got to pull it on a highly polished base so that's why I've left this like this we're going to have the highly polished bit so you'll see what it's like on that and man that little that just caught it and scratched it but that's going to be handy for me for something else this has been polished up a bit but I don't know if you can see it's still got scratch marks in it and so on and this has just been sandblasted and it actually produces quite a nice sort of almost matte it's not quite a semi-gloss it's closer to matte but a grey finish but it is nickel so it's you know it's going to be protection from rust and all the rest of it so this is what we're going to plate as our test piece now just as the finish affects the nickel then also like with paint with glue with anything else you've got to have it completely clean and grease free otherwise the nickel the paint whatever is going to stick to the grease or the muck and not the thing you want it to plate so this has got to be degreased now you can buy from the kit manufacturers um, a degreaser which I think is basically caustic soda I, I didn't buy any myself and you sort of boil this in it for a couple of minutes and then you degrease it so what I'm going to do because it's such a small piece is I'm just going to use some acetone to degrease it and then once it's been degreased you do a water test on it um, I should have some water to show you I'll show you this in a minute I'll get another little test piece out but when you've degreased it then you don't want to even be touching it with your fingers or you will see the thing you know particularly if you've got greasy fingers you will actually see a fingerprint in the nickel so let me degrease this up and get it ready uh, but before we do that we'll measure it because we need to know the surface area so this is three and a half inches by three quarters don't forget it's got sides by almost an eighth so let me show you something else now this is a program that I wrote for uh, in the workshop I did actually have a bigger one that did my invoicing and everything but um, I had the power supply crap out on the computer one day and this is written in uh, Microsoft Access and the way that works if the power goes off while the database is running it just gets corrupted so I had to write another one and I don't need invoicing now so 
it's got my workshop manuals and everything in it so what we do is we go to nickel plating we are going to use a piece of plate so we have 3.5 inches by 0.75 inches by 0.125 inches thick which gives us 6.3 square inches that's both sides and all the way around the edge and that should give us there we go so we need basically 0.4 amps that's a lot easier than doing it with a calculator so we're going to give it a little bit more than that um, if you give it too much it tends to sort of burn the finish but don't forget you have the wire in there and things like that so I'm going to give it 0.5 of an amp so let's go and uh, look at our test piece right I've got everything wired up positive to our uh, nickel plate and it's cross connected around there so they're both positive negative to this piece on which we're going to hang this so make sure everything's nice and clean so you've got a good electrical contact put that in again just pull it around a little bit make sure you've got a good contact it's hanging in between the two plates and we'll just let the temperature settle a little bit there before we switch this on and while that's happening I'll mention something else that you've got to bear in mind which you should have said before we measured a piece of plate there but just think if you were going to nickel plate this for instance imagine it was a wheel spacer or something like that well you'd want it nickel plated inside as well to get it all nicely rust protected so this time you're going to have to work out the surface area of the outside the surface area of the inside and also the end here so you're going to have two surface areas and two ends to work out that's why I wrote the program it does all that for me okay so let's say we'll give that a moment right now then we're going to uh, switch this on and we want it 0.5 so let's see come on now Why are you on constant voltage? Oh, isn't this just typical? Everything's on, right? Amps. I don't believe this don't tell me my nice new voltage regulator has decided to pack up on me let me switch you off while I play with this right you missed all the cursing and swearing there <laughs> shows you how much I know about electricity I didn't have enough voltage to get any current going through it so <laughs> As I keep telling my wife, I'm just a simple-minded Yorkshireman. So let's uh, set that at 0.5, roughly. See, it's given it takes very little amperage, uh, very little voltage to get that amperage through there. So we're going to give that an hour, which is what uh, Caswell recommend for outdoor use. So. Um, I don't know, do you want to sit there for an hour and watch the little numbers change or shall I actually turn you off and come back later? I'll turn you off. All right, I've just switched it off. It's had just over an hour. There we go and look, well, I'll show you this closer up, but the copper that I cleared off is now completely coated. So let me give this a wash off and then we'll have a closer look. There's our test piece. Now, let's see, I didn't go mad with all this because I wanted to show you various things. So you can see the quality of the shine to it. And there where it was perfect, 
and there's marks, little scratches, you can see all them. And here you see where we didn't polish it, it doesn't fill, it's not meant to. It's If you wanted to get rid of those, what you would have to do, let's say there was deep rust pitting, is first of all, you would have to plate it with copper, because copper's nice and soft and you can build it up really thickly, I mean, to like, I don't know, nearly a quarter of an inch, I think. And then you can sand it back till it's smooth, rather like using body filler, but of course the copper is conductive so you can plate over it. And now the other side. And there, as I say, is that, I quite like that. Again, I didn't uh, finish the surface off perfectly, the scratches, but if you've got it sanded out reasonably and then you just glass bead blast it or glass blast it, you get that really nice, I like that finish. So what I'm gonna do next is another piece. Let me go and get it. Now this is the next piece I'm going to do, and the reason I'm going to do this, I'm not sure if the colours are going to show up, but this is actually bronzed together. I didn't see it there. So what we're going to see this time is, when it's nickel plated, you won't see the brown of the bronze, or the bronzy colour of the bronze. Alright? So I'll measure all this up, get it done, and then we'll put it in and see how that turns out. Well, here's the other piece I did, and you can see there, that's where the bronze was. Completely plated. Nice and shiny. I also did the wheel spacers. And the collets for the rear suspension units. And actually, what you'll see from these, I polished this side, but of course the other side you don't see so that's just the way it is when it's glass blasted you don't want it to be sandblasted certainly not something like the uh, slag stuff to give it a really sort of uh, rough finish but just glass blasted and then uh, plated i think that's a really nice finish that sort of uh, as i say it's got a shine to it but it's it's duller it's like a an eggshell but they all came up very nicely. There's the other wheel piece. I've left some slight marks in then the turning marks that you know could have gone on and on and on but I didn't. All right so let's uh, make our final look at nickel plate. The final thing you do is you let these drain off you take your pump out give that a wash out and uh, also your heater. Now the reason I'm draining this, and I'll give them a little bit of a wash off with a water bottle with some distilled water is because you're trying to keep the solution to the correct concentration, both of the nickel sulfate and the brightener. So you don't want to just pull these out and lose all that uh, material. So this actually, as we've now found out, is more important than I thought it was. All the problems I've had were down to using an old solution and then using old plates which I thought would be fine but just shows you how much I know. So just a quick recap. Um, this was a real real time nickel plating video. Um, don't you hate it when everything goes right and then you go and try it and it doesn't work? So you buy your kit, we've seen how you set it up, we've seen the importance of fresh material, we use the word fresh shall we, both the solution and the plates. You've seen that you have to clean things, you saw the difference on the test piece between what was polished smooth, what still had scratches in, and you've seen the difference between the um, nice shiny finish and that slightly duller finish which as I say I quite like. So that's nickel plating, it's not that difficult it's like a lot of things, it's just a question of being careful as you do it. And the finish is great. Um, I have parts on my trials bike, I think I mentioned this, which I did, what, eight years ago. And obviously this bike goes out in the wet, it gets covered in mud and all sorts of stuff and left dirty. And they're still fine, no peeling, no rust. These kits really work as long as you do it right. So I hope that's given you a good idea of what's involved in nickel plating. And um, if you have any more questions, either make a comment and I can answer it, 
or send me an email through the website www.britanniamotorcycles.com and um, I don't know so much that I'll be able to tell you a lot of stuff but I will be able to tell you where I went wrong and what worked right. So until the next time, off you go and enjoy yourselves.